Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Gao series videos for a gameplay breakdown. First, note that there is a significant improvement in the way the plants look. Details have been added to the vegetation. Notice also the purple thistle flower, a staple to the Gears franchise, reminiscent of a Gears of War 2 trailer. The leaves move in the breeze and the foliage looks rich as well. The light on the Lancer is the next observation, a tactical property of the rifle, and we see a modified rifle butt on the weapon. This could always bring the possibility of customizing weapons for the first time in the series, excluding weapon skins of course. Here, out of the shadows, we finally see what appears to be the new protagonist of the game. With blue eyes, blonde hair, dirt on his skin and armor, and a broken nose, this raises so many questions about where he has been and who he is. We also have the female protagonist, a young girl with dark hair, a hat on her head, and a tattoo on her left arm. Her medium dark complexion resembles that of Samantha Byrne. Up in the night sky, we can see two moons of Sarah through a moderate wind that rustles leaves into the air. The ground has seen some damage and has plenty of debris. This damage is most likely the tessellation for the surfaces already supported by Direct X 11. The female whose name has recently been announced as Kate approaches an abandoned and rusty car, a classic element in Gears, but it's been touched up for sure. This approach is a bit reminiscent of works by Naughty Dog. The IA of the character seems to be enhanced with animations that add depth to the gameplay. Obviously, playing as female in co-op will be different in regard to animation, which leads us to wonder, will co-op be two or four players? The pair walk up to the entrance of a building that has been halfway demolished. The arch seems to have been marked with a red substance and there are also some ivy-like leaves of the same color that are tougher to discern. Kate approaches the fountain and tests the water. We don't know if the planet Sarah remains contaminated with previous surface wars, specifically the battle against the pathogen Lambent. Water is surely a valuable resource that could carry disease. Far off, we can hear an animal call. Our protagonist reports the location of a creature on the roof. We still have the Y button as an on-screen indicator for points of interest. This guarantees that the default control scheme is not identical to Gears of War Judgment, since Y changed the player's weapon in the Xbox 360 exclusive. Here, one can notice the running animation of the girl, which is certainly more realistic than in the past. The belt and cloth are both moving as well. Also, notice the giant tornado embedded with electricity. Could this be an artificial vortex, such as the Maelstrom? Many elements of the landscape get destroyed here, including a light pole and this building that implodes from the gigantic shock. The protagonist tries to go backwards, which is not typical of Gears However, the path is interrupted by a car that destroys the bridge. Kate calls to the protagonist, referring to him as JD. An idea we have is that this JD is no other than Jonathan Dominique Phoenix, bearing the middle name of Marcus Phoenix's father and also the name of his best friend and brother. With the hardness of his face and that glacial look and the possible blonde hair of Anya Stroud, this could be a possible son of Marcus Phoenix. Moving on, the gear uses his Lancer's chainsaw to break the lock of a gate and moves forward as he recovers from a stun. As he roadie runs, the protagonist slightly stumbles under the weight of the wind, which marks once again a greater interaction and variety than previous year's titles. Kate opens the door solo, not waiting for a direct intervention of the character being controlled by the player. Now what? Now we find out if that thing's a game with us. In this closed area, we can see some objects such as books, shelves, and a red curtain. Then the protagonist moves on and runs into a kind of structure hanging in mid-air and automatically begins to spawn out. Further on, there are some sinister looking cocoons which also happen to be glowing. Kate suggests not to touch them, but our protagonist ignores her and softly pushes it with the barrel of his lancer. This brings forth a slew of fluid that smears the armor and causes the deactivation of the light emitting diodes and his tactical light. To respond, Kate points out that he's glowing, so it's fine? It appears that the protagonists ignore what happened in the past because of the emulsion. There it is. Quick, come on. Go. Move. Oh no. All right. Just 
to touch the pods. The substance that had smeared our character fades out or falls, and together the LEDs and the tactical light of the Lancer turn back on. While they go through a corridor filled with those strange luminescent things, some shingles fall from their recently destroyed roof to show us that the creatures are moving from side to side. The two gears reach a medieval style courtyard. We could see two cannons in the foreground and you could also see the interweaving of those strange lines that penetrate palaces passing through windows and doors. We're not the hunters anymore. Kate is frightened and points out to her court. companion that they are going to run into those, quote, things. She then makes the point that they are now the Damn. prey instead of the hunters. The Our door. protagonist yeah, suggests to simply clean up the yard. Finally, the new enemy appears. His back is covered with a shield with red tones and the skin is gray. The creature's claws are massive. Multiple appendages, including a membrane-laced tail with stingers it uses to shoot enemies, make this something crazy. It leaps off of the roof and lands on a car, which it crushes. We then see its gaping mouth filled with tentacles. Its tail lights up when it is going to shoot. The fight begins, showing many classic elements of the game's franchise. Now we can see the weapon selection menu. It is currently the same as Gears of War 3, but it is unlikely to be one of the final aspects the software house will work on. The iconic Lancer we all know is very different than this Lancer, which has some modified calcium. It is possible that the Coalition intends to introduce some kind of customization that consequently should change the menu and the gameplay accordingly. The enemy then tries to jump on the protagonist, and he aims with his natural shotgun, killing it with a single blow, dismembering it. Another beast attacks Kate, jumping on top of her. The gear runs up to her and melees the enemy, and then proceeds to go to work with that chainsaw. The movement here appeared very fluid and connected. Next, a third enemy attacks our protagonist. The gear rapidly protects his face with his arm, and the beast bites, causing a bloody wound with a visible spatter. The beast squirms and tries to bite him on the face with quick bites. The gameplay ends here, on this tough, cliffhanging sequence. I hope you all enjoyed this gameplay analysis. My name is Rorschach, this has been Gao Series Videos, and thanks so much for watching. Did you see that?